Hello and welcome to the Lolly Investor Programme. This week I'm looking at the second of three savings plans that I don't really like. Last time I had a bit of a go with profits endowments for being a bit of a good idea that went wrong. Today it's the turn of structured products which are another attempt to minimise the risk of putting your money on the stock market. Of course there's nothing wrong with that at all, it's just that in an attempt to provide the public with something simple and safe to put their money in, the financial services industry has come up with plans that are not easy to understand and sometimes dangerous. Honestly, if they weren't so serious, events around structured products in recent years wouldn't be out of place in the comedy of errors, which is why I'm standing outside Shakespeare's Globe. So what are structured products exactly? They are fixed term savings plans that require you to lock your money away between three years and six years. They are sold by banks, building societies and financial advisors as sort of halfway house between safe cash based savings accounts and risky full on investments in the stock market. Structured products is a generic name that you might never actually hear used. Instead they are also known as guaranteed equity bonds, structured cash ISAs, growth deposit plans, guaranteed capital plans, guaranteed income bonds, protected investment funds. The important thing to know about structured products is that they use financial derivatives to provide that protection or guarantee. Now, as soon as I say the word derivatives, I know alarm bells are ringing in your head. Derivatives are high risk, aren't they? Well, they certainly can be. The funny thing about structured products is that they use derivatives to try and bring order into chaos, to try and structure a defined return out of a very unruly environment, the stock market. Even funnier, they don't actually invest in stocks and shares. Here is a simple example of how a six year structured product might work. This plan offers you your money back after six years and to pay you a proportion of the rise in the FTSE 100 on top. This proportion will be stated from the start so you know where you are. The bulk of your money, as much as £85 of every £100 you invest, goes into a zero coupon bond to ensure your capital can be repaid. Zero coupons sound scary, but all it means is that the bond won't pay any interest but will simply grow enough so that your £85 is worth £100 in six years time. Meanwhile the rest of your money is split in two ways. The first buys a derivative contract called a call option on the FTSE 100. This is the bit that provides the proportion of the growth in the FTSE 100 that you are owed. Essentially the product is buying its growth in advance. The rest of your money, you never find out how much, goes to the bank as its profit. It's a pretty neat arrangement. Structured products can be useful for people who need a certain amount of money at a set point in the future, for example for school or university fees. People coming up to retirement can also use them as a way of keeping their pension savings invested whilst protected from a stock market crash. The basic setup I've explained can also be modified to suit different needs. For example, you can buy plans that will offer less than 100% capital protection but more growth or you can buy income plans that turn that preset capital growth into a series of regular payments. So what's the problem? Why don't I like them? Well, structured products have a number of disadvantages. First of all, your money is not guaranteed and may be at risk if the company providing the zero coupon bond or the derivative runs into trouble. If that company is an investment bank and collapses like Lehman Brothers did in 2008, your money will not be protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. However, if a high street bank or building society is involved, you may be covered. Also, structured products can be very complex. In the past 10 years, banks have had a bad habit of understating the risks and mis-selling the products to their customers. Several have been fined by the Financial Services Authority. All of which makes me wonder if they're worth the trouble. The fact is, if you're simply saving for your retirement and have 20 or 30 years to go, then you don't need a structured product. You'd be much better off saving into a good investment fund every month that will give you the full return of the stock market. Yes, it's riskier, but you've got time to take the risk and you'll make more money in the long run. More money for you and less money for the bank. Sounds like a winner to me. That's it for this week. Next time, I'll look at the pros and cons of investment bonds.